Mike Radich here, and I'm now joined on the phone by MMA veteran YL Watson. YL, how are you? I'm doing great, Mike. How are you, brother? I'm doing good. YL, you got a fight coming up September 21st at Cage 23. How's training been going for the fight? Oh, man, this is probably one of my best camps I've ever had, you know. Just because I've had so much time, you know, to prepare. My last fight was back in January, Mm -hmm. and all I've done was just grow since then. You know, I've been in, I stayed in the gym. Stay consistently. I've had a couple camps and a couple fights fall through, but I just stayed in the gym, stayed training, stayed learning, stayed improving on all my skills. And right now, I feel like I'm the best YL I've ever been. Mm-hmm. What caused the layoff? I know you mentioned uh, some fights falling through. What exactly were the reasons why these fights didn't take place? Uh, usually, my opponent they're either mm-hmm. hurt, sick, can't get off work, or they just don't want to fight me straight mm-hmm. out, and so. I had a lot of disappointing, you know, callbacks talking about, oh, I'm sorry, this guy's not going to take the fight. Or oh, this guy said he's hurt. I had a guy tell me you couldn't get off of work. I, I heard every excuse you can in the book. So, mm-hmm. you know, but, like, luckily, I, you know, I didn't get discouraged. I stayed in the gym. I didn't get lazy. I stayed training hard. And I was prepared for them when the phone call came. You know, I've only been getting better and better and better each day. Mm-hmm. I heard a rumor, I believe it was around February or, or March uh, earlier this year, that you had signed with World Series of Fighting. Was that true? Did, did you ever have any talks with them? Was there ever a contract put in front uh, of you? No, not yet, mm-hmm. unfortunately. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, that's my release. I really haven't really had no talks with no big shows. Mm-hmm. I think they're all waiting for the same thing, you know, to see me fight some game opponents, and then they'll come and talk to me. And that's what I've been looking for, a game opponent. And that's what I got in Tom Nemanaki, a guy who's super dangerous and will definitely put me back on the radar for the big shows. Mm -hmm. Now, this fight on September 21st for Cage 23, that's going to be at featherweight. Is this, you know, your new weight class? Are you going to be moving up to featherweight? Or is this something where you've struggled to find fights and and this was the fight that was offered? So, you know, it makes sense. You know, I I need a fight. Here's an offer. I'll just take it. Are you you going up to featherweight or are you just doing it for this fight because you need a fight? No, I'm staying. Featherweight's my own. Mm -hmm. This is it. You know, I've I've done cutting 40 pounds to make 135. I'm not doing that no more. I'm a big boy now and... You know, I'm a grown man. I can't mm-hmm. make that weight. When I first started fighting at 35, I was, I was young. You know, I was fresh out of college. Mm-hmm. I only weighed about 145 tops, maybe 148 on a bad day, and weight cut was super easy. And before I knew it, I kept growing, and I hit this growth spurt, and I couldn't do anything about it. And I, I had to be cutting 35, 40 pounds, and that was killing me, killing me, killing my performance. When I saw myself on video, it didn't look like the guy that I knew. And you know, my strength and conditioning coach wasn't happy with my performances, and he told me I could see the difference in your strength from when you're at 45 or when you're under 45 trying to make weight. He's like, you're not the same guy, Lyle. You're slower, you're weaker, and I don't like it. I don't like to see you like this. And I trust that man 110%. And he told me that. I sat there and watched the video, and I was like, he's right. That's not me in there. And I need to move up to a weight, a higher weight class. So I fought your last two fights at a higher weight class, and I went back and watched the video immediately, and... I can see the difference. I'm way faster and way stronger. Mm -hmm. Why exactly did you wait so long to make the jump up to featherweight? Because you had fought in the UFC four times, and and you had lost two fights before the um, Mitch Gagnon fight. Why didn't you decide to maybe that that fourth fight in the UFC maybe make that jump up uh, to featherweight to try to get you know maybe something going in your late UFC run? Why did you wait until you were outside the organization to make that move? I was just young and dumb, you know what I mean? I, I felt like I signed the contract saying I'd be a 35er and I had an obligation to fulfill, not even thinking about, you know, okay, I, I could just talk to them and they'll, they'll work it out with mm-hmm. me. Had I known that, I probably would have definitely jumped up right away. But like I said, I just, it's inexperience, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Was it those last three fights where the decision was made to go up to a featherweight or was this something where after you had been released from the UFC, they sat you down and said, hey, I... I like you better at a higher weight class. Was it, you know, an immediate decision, or was there time in between there where, you know, you you thought about maybe going back down to bantamweight and and just continuing there? Was it an immediate decision, or was there, you know, a lot of... I thought about trying to go back Mm -hmm. to bantamweight, so I wasn't really sure yet, you know. But, like I said, once I sat down and watched the video Mm -hmm. of myself, and I saw a video from when I first started fighting, and I was looking at it, and I'm like, two different guys in there. That's not the same guy that the UFC saw. Mm-hmm. The UFC saw something in me when I was fighting in the regional level, mm-hmm. and that's when I was a lot lighter, 
and I was making that 135, and I was a killer then. I was fast, I was explosive, and I was finishing fights. Then I watched myself in the UFC, and I wasn't that. I was slow, I was lethargic, I looked weaker than everybody, and it was just from that weight cut. So once I really sat down and watched the video and seen what, what was happening to me, that's when I realized, you know what, I made a mistake. I wish I would have really sat down and focused on the video the first time and seen what was happening to me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You're a really, really tall guy, extremely tall, in fact, for a bantamweight. I mean, it's amazing that you were even able to make 135. You said it was, you know, hell to try to make uh, bantamweight from dropping 40 pounds. You know, what exactly did you have to do to cut that weight? Man, you name it, we did it. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, we started myself, we did everything to my, we put my body through a lot, a lot, a lot of stress. Mm-hmm. where the fight was making the way to me, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? By the time I stepped on the scale and I seen that scale tip to 35, I won the fight in my head. Mm-hmm. That was it. I, I, I finished my fight, and that took me out of the fight right there. After that, I wasn't mentally in the game. I was just happy just to make the weight and not embarrass myself in front of everybody because that's a big thing to me, embarrassing myself. I hate to come up there and see a fighter not make weight. That is, that's embarrassing. We're professionals, mm-hmm. and we should always fulfill our obligations. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that, that's what really killed me, man, just doing all the things we had to do to my body, man. I, I mean, I went sometimes days without eating, days, mm-hmm. days and days with no food in my body just to make the weight. Mm-hmm. And that's not something that any fighter should ever have to do, taking away all the nutrition and everything they have just to make a weight class. That doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. Was it possibly due to your height and being so tall that you felt even more pressure to make the weight? Because, you know, had you gone to a UFC weigh-in or whatever and weighed, you know, eight pounds, nine pounds over, you know, everyone would have been like, you know, why did this guy even attempt to do this? He's he's way too tall for this weight class. He he doesn't have anything to lose. And anyways, you know, I, I think you only have like four or five percent body fat or something like that. You know, it, it's, you would have kind of been, you know, laughed out of the building. You know, why would you even attempt this uh, weight cut? Was that something that, that played a factor in, you know, given your height and the weight you were trying to drop and the weight class you were trying to fight in? Almost definitely, mm-hmm. you know. Like, like I said, like, the day I got the phone call was like all of a sudden my body decided it's going to just die to grow. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, man, you know, I, I have an obligation to fulfill and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to keep my word. If I told Sean Shelby that I'm going to make 135, I'm going to make 135, whether if it kills me or not. And I remember looking at my coaches a couple of times and I told them that no matter what I say or do, you guys make sure I make 135 because that's what I said I would do. And, you know, like I said, had I been a little bit wiser and smarter and, and really understood the game that you could talk to Sean Shelby and them and they know I and explain to them your situation, I could have moved up a weight class and who knows where I'd be. But at the same time, you know, it is what it is and you got to have trials and tribulations and those losses are going to make me a much better person, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. much better fighter. Mm-hmm. I don't mean to dwell on the past, uh, you know, look at the negative because you you're doing so well now. You you've won two fights on the regional circuit and two lightning fast finishes. So, I I don't want to dwell too much on the past, but you did have those three losses at the end of your UFC run. Uh the Eve Jewin fight, I thought you had won that fight, so I, I kind of give you a pass on that one, but but the other two, uh what went wrong for you in those fights? First, let's start with the Eve Jewin fight because although a lot of people thought you won including myself, you you still ended up with a loss. Um, let's start with that one. In your opinion, what did you not do? You know, what did you not do enough of to you know sway the judges in your favor in that fight? In my opinion, I didn't finish the fight. Mm-hmm. Anytime you're in somebody's country mm-hmm. and you're fighting their countrymen, you better finish that fight, mm-hmm. or you better beat the dog breaks out of them so bad mm-hmm. that they can't help but give you the win. And, you know, and that's the mistake I made against Eve Job when I went in there. You know, respecting him way too much. And not going for the kill enough. I didn't go for the kill except, you know, for the guillotine that I went for in the second round and then darts that I went for in the third. That's stuff I should have done early. I could have done that in the first round and finished the fight. And that's something I should have done. But, you know, I made that mistake. I over-respected ease. I didn't want to get hit with something crazy. And, you know, it hurt me for that. Can't fit safe. You can't be afraid to lose. And that's, that's something I was afraid of in that fight, you know, and I let that play a factor. Mm-hmm. And now the TJ Dillashaw fight, what went wrong for you there? The weight cut, man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I hate to take right. anything away from TJ. Mm-hmm. He was an awesome fight. He's an awesome wrestler. He had a great game plan. But, you know, when you cut 40 pounds, <laughs> mm-hmm. you don't eat for a couple of days. Things mm-hmm. are going to happen to you, and you're not going to perform your best, you know. 
like I said, again, I don't want to take nothing away from TJ. He had a great game plan. He went out there and he executed it the way he wanted to do it, and he, mm-hmm. he imposed his will on me, mm-hmm. you know. But I feel had I, you know, been the same old YL, cutting only a couple pounds, 15 pounds, I would have been more explosive. I would have been on my feet, and I would have had my head right in that fight. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, when you're cutting all that weight in, in a fight, you know, at what point in the fight does your gas just, you, you go from full to completely empty when you're depleting yourself like that? You know, how, how deep into the fight are you when you're, you really feel those effects of a long weight cut? Um, the good thing about my gas is I, I have great cardio. Mm-hmm. I never went right. out of cardio. You know, mm-hmm. in the each job wind fight, I'm never, I was never breathing hard. And the same thing with the dual shot fight, I was never breathing hard. But it's the fatigue of your muscles. Your mm-hmm. muscles don't want to perform. Your your legs don't want to move. You know, your head is just cloudy. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm, I'm in the fight, and I feel like everything's in a haze mm-hmm. the whole time. Everything's just happening so slow for me. Like, I see what's happening, but my reaction time is behind every time. I'm, I see the punch coming, I get hit, then I move. I see the takedown coming, I get taken down, then I'm trying to react to it. And, and you, you can't be a fight, you can't be doing that. You know, you can't. You can't be cutting so much weight that when it's time to fight, you're not thinking right anymore. Mm-hmm. 30% of your water goes to your brain, and when you're cutting 40 pounds, I'm pretty sure your, your brain's just swishing and sloshing around in the back of your head, not working right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And now the Gang Young fight, is it just as simple as you got caught and then choked? Excited, that- too excited. Mm-hmm. You know, it was one of the easier weight cuts finally. We did mm-hmm. a lot of things to so finally make the weight without making it so difficult on my body. And I just, I wanted to come out there and show the whole world that what mm-hmm. happened in the Dillashaw fight wasn't going to happen again. Mm-hmm. And I just got over the anxious. I didn't stick to the game plan. I didn't listen to my coaches when they told me to calm down, to relax, to take your time, and I ran out there and got caught with something. Mm-hmm. Now, I've asked a lot of fighters who you know have been in the UFC, fallen on hard times, were released from the UFC, and now are working their way uh, back up. I- I've talked to a lot of those guys, and everyone has a different answer. Uh, so-, so I'll throw the question to you. Um, you know, when you get released from the UFC, what happens to you? Do you do you take it as you know, kind of s- something where you you know you're hard on yourself? You know, you're you're very disappointed. Like, oh, I didn't perform my best. Do you take it as you know, uh, I let people down. I let my team down. I let my coaches down. Do you take it as uh, a motivating factor to you know look at the stuff that you did? And, and try to uh, approve upon you know what what goes through your mind when, when you get that call saying that you're no longer part of the organization a little bit of everything you know right away you think that you let your your teammates down you let your coaches down you let your your, your family mm-hmm. down you know you think all that you know you work so hard to be where you are and you know, of course you're going to feel like you let some people down but mm-hmm. when you have a, a great support system like i got you know right away my coaches look right at me and say hey we're proud of you still we don't care what happened you're still a great fighter, and we know a couple wins you'll be back in. You know, same thing with my family. They're right there behind me immediately backing me up and telling me, you still got this. You're still a great fighter. And like I said, once my strength and conditioning coach sat me down and really put it, you know, in perspective for me, and he said, man, you're a great fighter, Wilo, but here's what's happening. Look at the video and see what's happening. See what I'm seeing in there. And, you know, you can do nothing but work harder. It made me hungrier to come back in the show that you will see that I belong there and I will be a world champion someday. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, would you say that you're more hungry now to make it back to the UFC because you've had that taste of the big show? Would you say you're more hungry now to make it back there than you were when you were just an up-and-coming guy trying to get there? Would, would you say that? Oh, yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm way more hungry now because I've, I've tasted it, mm-hmm. you know? Right. You get that little taste. Now you know what it tastes like. Now you want it even more. You know, before you don't even know what it is. Mm-hmm. So you, it's just, just a dream before. You don't know if it's ever going to happen. Some guys will fight their whole career and never make it to the UFC, no matter what their record is. You know, and that's just the way of life. But once you had a little taste, you just want it. You want it bad, and I want it real bad. Mm-hmm. Now you're going to be fighting Tom Ninamaki. I hope I got that right. Tom Ninamaki. What are your thoughts about him as an opponent? Oh, he's a great fighter. You know, he's on a 10 fight win streak, 19 and 5. He's been ripping through his region. You know, the guy doesn't take too many fights to the decision, so I know he's going to come out and try to rip my head off, and I'm going to try to do the same thing. Nothing but respect to him. But, you know, this is my time. You know, I've worked really hard. I've worked really, really hard for this, and I feel at 145, I'm the next big thing. Mm hmm. He's on a 10-fight win streak, like you mentioned. His most notable win in that 10-fight win streak is against uh, former WC champ Chase Beebe. The 10 fights that he's had, that he's you know been on this win streak, uh, have you been impressed by what he's done with these 10 fights? 
I mean, you gotta you gotta be impressed. He mm. knows how to win, mm -hmm. whether it's he's fighting top level competition or not. The man knows how to win, and the minute you start disrespecting that, you're gonna get knocked out. You're gonna get submitted. Something bad's gonna happen to you. You know, I think that's kind of what you know, a couple of factors that came in when I fought the Gan uh, the Gan Young fight. That's how I went in there. Like, oh, this guy ain't fought nobody yet. He ain't fought nobody. He ain't ready. I've been in the UFC longer than him. He ain't ready. And then boom, I'm on my ass wondering what's happening. Mm -hmm. uh, the minute you disrespect an opponent is the minute it all goes bad. Mm -hmm. Of these these ten you know wins that he's had this this ten fight win streak that he's on, what are you going to bring to the table? What what is he going to see from you that he hasn't seen in these ten fights? Speed, speed kills. He's never seen a guy with speed like mine. He's never seen a guy with angles like mine. He ain't never seen a guy with submissions like mine. Mm -hmm. Now you've been on the big show. You you fought a lot of tough guys, and and even before you were in the UFC, you were fighting tough guys. Obviously, it, it's hard to say now because the fight hasn't taken place yet. But looking at what he's done in the past, and and comparing him to to guys that you've fought in the past, you know where does he rank? Is, is he up there? Is is he a, you know, a lateral step in competition? Is he the appropriate step in competition? You know where do you rank him? I think he's definitely the appropriate step mm -hmm. in competition. I think he's up there. I think I think he's definitely on some big show radars. Mm -hmm. And you know, like I said, the minute I think any less of him is the minute it all goes bad. So I don't think any less of that man at all. I respect him one hundred and ten percent. I take him very serious. He's the champion of that show. I believe he's ranked number two in Europe right now. So the last thing I need to be doing is thinking, "Oh, I'm just gonna run through this guy." Because, like I said, the minute I think some stuff like that, is the minute it all goes south for you. Mm -hmm. You're a guy who mostly has fought in, you know, North America, Canada, United States, Mexico, etc. Those are usually the spots that you fight in. Now you're going to Finland. Um, you know, what are your thoughts about just making this, you know, long journey to a fight? And when you originally got started in this sport, did you ever think, you know, hey, five, six plus years into this sport, I'm going to be fighting in Finland? Um, not so much Finland, but my goal was always fight all around the world. Mm -hmm. You know, to call yourself the greatest fighter in the world, you've got to go around the world and you got to fight the best fighters in the world. And, and that was always my goal since day one. And, you know, Finland, just another thing on the map to go to. You go handle my business. Go take care of business over there. Give me another W and show the world that I am going to be the best. Mm -hmm. Do you know exactly how long of a trip it is? Uh, 15 hours, 16 hours? Do you know how, so how long? 15 hour travel time mm -hmm. for me, and I'm taking off tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Will there be a layover in between there? Uh, I think like a, like a 40 minute layover oh. in uh, New York. I'm going from here to New York, from New York straight over there, so not too much of a layover. Oh, that's not bad. That's not bad. Are you a good flyer? Will, will, will the flying be an issue for you? Because, you know, I know personally myself, you know, I, I've traveled to Australia. I've traveled to a lot of, uh, you know, countries uh, overseas. But, you know, I always get sick. I'm, I'm not a good flyer. So, so are you a, a good flyer? Uh, luckily, my only problem is I got ADD. I can't sit. Oh. <laughs> so I don't get sick. I just I have no patience to sit for so so many hours on a plane. So other than that, I'll be fine. You know, I'm going to be antsy and moving around and wanting to get up and stuff. But other than that, I've, I've been blessed so far. I've, I've never been sick on a flight or anything like that. And I, sh I should be just fine. You know, God willing, everything will be all right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How's your weight right now? Are you, are you pretty close to making weight? Yeah, I woke up this morning 146.6. Mm. Oh. Uh, I, I, I expect to wake up. I just finished my last roll right now. So I'm probably on 45 on the dot. I expect to wake up tomorrow about 45. That way when I get on the plane, I can eat a little something. Because I know you always gain at least two pounds mm -hmm. of water on the plane from whatever they put in their stuff. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'll, I'll be ready to go. The weight cut's going to be cake. I'm going to be strong. I should be back up to my normal weight by fight night and ready to ready to do my thing, feeling strong and healthy, not depleted and weak. Mm -hmm. Fast, strong, ready to go. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we hear so many times about, you know, fighters when they travel to a different country, getting the, the toxins and all that stuff out, out of their system when they're doing the flying thing and all that. Uh, you know, how do you plan to kind of get acclimated to the new area that you're going to be fighting in? Uh, as soon as I touch down, I'm, you know, I'm going to get a workout, get a sweat, exactly what you're saying, sweat out all those toxins, mm -hmm. and then go from there, you know, get some sleep. And then I usually acclimate in about a day or two to the time changes of where, where I go, and I should be fine after that. Mm -hmm. One question I have about this fight is, is it going to be five five-minute rounds? Because I know some of the countries in Europe don't allow 
fights past three rounds. I know Sweden doesn't allow five round fights. I know that um, Poland doesn't allow five round fights. Is this going to be a three rounder or a five? It's a three rounder. Oh, okay. Um, if you're able to win this fight and add that to the stuff that you've already done with the two wins that you've had, the two fast finishes that you've had uh, in your other two fights post UFC. Is this enough to get you a call back to the big show, a win here? Do you think that that gets you a call to a big show? Definitely hope so, that that would show Dana White and them that I deserve to be back in there and at least give me a trial with the UFC again, give me a one-fight contract if they have to. If not, I'll do whatever I have to do. If they tell me, why don't you need three more wins, and why else don't we get three more wins? If they say, give me one more win, I'm going to give them one more win. Whatever they tell me i got to do, that's what I'm going to do to get back to the UFC. Mm-hmm. Is it the UFC or nothing for you, or would you be open to, like we mentioned, the World Series of Fighting earlier, or Bellator, or is it just you know UFC, or you're just going to stay on the regional circuit? It's really hard to say, you know. If, if the offer comes, then it's a good offer. You know, I got I got to think about me and my family, you know, in the future. I can't just be being selfish and only want the UFC. I pray this UFC. You know, everybody's goal is to fight in the UFC, but and that's my goal is to return back so I can show them that I belong there. But if the UFC says they can't bring me in or, you know, World Series of Fighting comes with a great offer on the table, you know, I'm going to have to sit down with my coach and my manager and my family and, and go from there and see what, what's best for YL. Mm-hmm. YL, on September 21st, how do you defeat Tom Nilamaki? You know what I mean? I'm, I can't tell you how it's going to happen, but I know I'm going to have my hand raised, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. That's for sure. I'm going to beat him with my heart and my skill and my desire, man. I put in so much work that he he's not going to be ready for a guy like me. Like I say, he never seen a fighter like me before. Mm-hmm. Well, real quick before I let you go, do you have any sponsors you'd like to thank, and is there anything you'd like to say to the fans? I want to thank the fans of MMA. You know, without them, there is no MMA. It's mm-hmm. hard. You know what I mean? Without having the fans that support you and your family that supports you, my coaches, my teammates. You know, I want to thank all my sponsors, 40 Thieves, uh, Muscle... Uh, uh, what is it? Uh, it's a new company, Muscle Balance Mouth Guard. They, they mm-hmm. picked me up. They helped me out. You know, all my fans, all my family, all the support. YL, thank you for taking the time to talk. I really appreciate it. Good luck September 21st at Cage 23 against Tom Nilamaki. Thank you, brother. Thank you so much.